Chris Kerr here. I am at Vex World in Dallas, Texas, and I'm, I'm about to have an interview with the chairman of the Vex Game Design Committee, Grant Cox, to talk about tips to get started in Vex High Stakes. Grant, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you so much. No worries. No worries. So uh, we just saw the awesome reveal of Vex uh, B5RC High Stakes. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about how you come up with these uh, Vex robotics games? All right, that's a good. How long of an answer do you want? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, so it's a it's a two year long process. Uh, it starts with an overall dynamic or, or concept, um, you know, not like cone stacking or, oh, we want to build a disc shooting game or things like that. It's more of a vague concept. So, for example, um, with um, with this year's game, Over Under, the core dynamic from the beginning was what makes soccer the most popular sport in the world. Right? It wasn't, we want to make a soccer game, because obviously Over Under turned out to not be a soccer game. It was like, what makes soccer most popular sport in the world? So we kind of break it down and like, Okay, a lot of offensive and defensive roles, a lot of like you know, crossing a distance to a point of finality at the end of the, you know, a lot of you have to work as a team, you kind of have one, you know, player who's just a superstar that does it all. So all these little things. Um, and then it's just a series of questions, you know, how many, how far, what are protected zones, and it just kind of breaks it all down um, and, and answers all the time. That's the, that's the 10,000 foot answer. I can get, you know, more detail if you want, but that's, that's kind of the general thing. Uh, where it starts. Fair enough. Yeah. And so what was the inspiration behind High Stakes? So High Stakes was a little bit of a different, it's, it's a bit of, bit of a unique one um, compared to what I was just talking about. With High Stakes, the core dynamic that we started with was, hey, V5 has been out for a little while now. It's super powerful. It's way more powerful than robots used to be. Let's take a game from the Cortex era and V5 of five it, right? And so we looked at uh, a couple games, Gateway, um, Nothing But Net, uh, Roundup, uh, Skyrise, uh, basically in like pro con yeah. each of them, which ones would work well in V5, which ones didn't. It also was like which ones maybe didn't get played to their fullest potential at the time, just because the robots weren't fully capable, and which ones could we really highlight the new powers of V5. So Roundup seemed like a natural choice. Roundup at the time, uh, up until high stakes, Roundup had the single highest climbing structure of X robots ever had to climb. Nobody climbed. So the robots were just not powerful. Right? So we're like, all right, we can do so we can do a bigger climbing structure. Uh, it also had some descoring issues where like there were matches that ended 0 0 because like it was easier to descore than was to score, and there were no like low level tasks that no push goals, things like that. It's like, okay, we can fix some of that balance, you know, make a little bit larger one. Um, and then we can throw in some wacky stuff like the dynamic quarters and just really make it a more intense game. So can we expect more of these Cortex era games to, to be popping up in the near future for VS? That's a good question. Uh, I, I usually don't, I try not to comment or speculate on future games. Um, all I'll say is, it's a new, we tried something new with this one. Um, I would say that the process I mentioned earlier, starting with the dynamic and you know, evolved, but building it from, from ground up, is gonna maintain our, that, that will still be our standard process moving forward. Um, so I wouldn't say like, oh, it's gonna start turning into just ground up, then, get, then nothing but yada yada. Um, we also weren't sure, and we're still not sure, what the reaction was going to be to essentially rehashing an old game. Uh, one thing I've said in interviews before, people ask all the time, will you ever reuse old game objects? And I always say, probably we'll never reuse a game object for the exact same purpose. And then starting last year, I had to start being more vague about that answer uh, because I knew this was coming. So I, I don't think it'll become the norm. I would say it's off the table. If that makes sense. Fair enough. Keep your game elements and everybody just in oh, case. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> How can we make it so that? Um, uh, what, what kind of tips can you give these new teams to make it all look good? Totally. The uh, I would give an answer that is actually not very unique to high stakes. I'll give an answer that applies to most robot games, which is don't try to do everything. But especially in a game like high stakes, there's there's a number of different tasks, there's a number of different scoring actions, a number of different robot mechanisms you could try and um, accomplish. Rather than trying to be jack of all trades, master of none, pick a subset that you will specialize in and be the best, you know, best in the world at that thing. So for high stakes, one example might be putting the one stack, uh, the one ring on the high stick. If you focus on being the absolute best at clearing out corners or, or swapping or desmoring, like that makes you a good candidate to be picked. It's really a matter of um, identifying your resources, knowing your resources, maximizing your potential within those resources, 
Uh, oh, and driver practice. Spend more time than you think on driver practice and more time than you think on raw time. Those two are almost more important than the actual physical design sometimes. So. Excellent, excellent. And um, uh, in terms of Auton and driver skills, uh, how can we, how do you think people should be using their sensors uh, to improve their game in high stakes? Another good question. Specifically, specifically in the case of high stakes, we knew that the uh, Gen 1, if you will, vision sensor was about to be replaced, you know, upgraded with the VEX AI vision sensor. And so the uh, mobile goals were specifically, you know, the, that's one of the reasons they have the bright colors and everything is a consistent color. It's one of the reasons why the mobile goals pipes have a different color than the ladder pipes, right? Everything is kind of designed to be as useful as possible, as detectable as possible by that 2D vision sensor, the AI vision sensor. Um, meaning, it opens up the door for doing some dynamic autons with that one mobile goal that starts on the uh, on the auton line, right? Opens up some ability to, hey, if your robot drops a ring, you might detect that and re-attempt it again. Especially when it comes to VEXU. Uh, at the time of this filming, um, the VEXU rules have not yet been released, but uh, by the time it goes out, they will have been. Uh, there are some new changes to the VEXU. Every year we, we change the rules slightly for VEXU, right? This game in particular, I think we've done some stuff that people will, I think they'll like, right? To basically make Vexu a bit more of a advanced, you know, sensor-heavy challenge, really incentivize teams to push that autonomous tool. So I really loved in Over Under how we had this late rule change regarding the yellow caps. You liked it. I, I really liked it because okay. it forced teams to, to change up their strategy uh, during the season and, and have something different for Worlds. Do we expect something similar to happen for high stakes? Are we going to see some drastic rule changes? Again, at the time of this filming, the rules have not been released, so I can't, in good faith, give you the answer I really want to give. But by the time this is released, you all will know something that he doesn't about what is going to be in the game. So, yeah, so when it comes to the yellow cap, um, that was, for, for a number of years, people have asked us, you know, how can you keep the game interesting over the course of the season? How can you keep an increasing challenge rather than just plateauing halfway through the season? And we usually are very nervous about making any gameplay changes or rule changes that change the robot design significantly or like change a decision like that a team would have made early in the strategic design process. Yellow Cap, for various reasons, we wanted to change up the way the climbing was working. We didn't love the way the game was basically very low, you know, nobody was going much higher than B, C, D, D2, right? And we didn't want to just say, ah, oh, triple the points for climbing or, you know, whatever. Like, you have to be careful about that balance, right? Reaction seems to have been pretty positive, um, as, as you appear like to agree with. So we definitely are going to be looking for ways to uh, adjust that more in the future, um, or adjust things like that more in the future. Specifically, possibly things like different plots on win point criteria, or things like different end game timings, or, or things like that. Fantastic. Well, I know you're a really busy man, oh, sorry. Brent, yeah. and uh, thank you so much for the interview. And uh, yeah, have a, have a great world. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you so much for the time. Yeah, no yeah. problems at all. And uh, good luck in high stakes.